on Restream. I have Kenneth Clifford and Anna Paola here, and they have just been traveling around Europe and in England, but they had a, quite a bit of time in uh, Spain before that. And then they just arrived back in Spain with some invitations in, yeah, some other places, Paris and Holland and Germany. So welcome. So great that you could be with me. <laughs> Thank you, David. It's so oh, sweet to be here with you. So good to see you. So beautiful. Well, you're like mystics on the move. You've, <laughs> you've just uh, jumped right in with Jesus on the road. And uh, it's been, what did we say? Was it eight months or ten? Ten months today. Ten months. You've been on the road just following your inner prompts, literally moment by moment, day by day. You have a gathering set or supposed to say with somebody, you get an inner prompt, no, they have COVID, go here, go there. Somebody else shows up, another garden shows up. So yeah, maybe you can just share a little bit about uh, how the journey's going for you. For both of you, you can just uh, share with everybody how, how things have been. Yeah. yeah, it's just been incredible, really, from start to finish, you know. I remember when we had our first meeting, David, about, hey, maybe it's failed to go to Spain. And then literally everything just fell in from that place, really. And so it's completely obvious whereby we got 20 invites and then um, we didn't have any money or anything. So we put out and then all the money came. And then it was like obvious that the trip was meant to happen. It was for um, it was for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So off we basically go on this journey, and so we're just meeting people we've never ever met them before um, in our lives. And as you said, we've really really got to listen um, and follow very very deeply. And it's like really it's like the basics of a course in miracles are absolutely everything. You've really got to fill into absolutely everything every 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 step of the way. Mm -hmm. And in that, that has really been for our joy and also for, like, for our dismantling. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, with me, um, when I came, I said to Jesus, do you think I should learn a little bit of Spanish? And he said, no. He said, you've got too much control as it is. He said, so when you can't understand the language, you just leave it to me. So I was like, perfect. You need to take your hands off the wheel. And I was like, great. And from that, really, it's taught me like more intuition, yeah? So because I couldn't understand the conversations, I would have to, I'd, I'd be feeling something and then I'd be saying, Anna, what's being said? And then she would tell me and then there would be some input or whatever, or I could just feel that everything was joyful and I'd say, yeah, that feels good, you know, <laughs> whatever was happening. So in a way, like Jesus was sort of like expanding my mind and saying, see, you don't really need to actually understand the language to understand what was um, going on. And then from that, like Anna would think that she'd communicated to me and she hadn't. And she said, oh, I thought I'd communicate it to you. So I had to be very sort of like flexible um, with what was happening. We're going here now. Okay. Okay, that's um, what we're doing. <laughs> funny because a lot of times people think in this world more is better, more languages, more, more experiences and everything. But it sounds like that the spirit was using that to help deepen your telepathy, mm -hmm. deepen your intuitive connection with each other. Right. Uh, exactly. Because that's a very different use of just using language to convey something where it was more of a backdrop. For, and the real lesson was how connected are you at the thought level? Yeah. So that, that is a deeper step that most people I mean, would, hear, would hear about. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened in the gatherings eventually. So what would happen was, is because it would be too much for Anna to speak and then translate it all for me, um, she would just have to talk. So I would sit there with my eyes closed. And by the end of it, she would say, would you like me to tell you what you said? I said, it's no problem. Um, I'll just, I'll just, I'm just going to go. <laughs> yeah. And I just start sharing. And afterwards, she'd say, are you understanding Spanish a bit more? And I said, no, I didn't understand the word you said. I said, I understood something. I said, but I didn't really understand. She said, well, what I shared, you ended up sharing all examples about everything that I shared. I said, I had no idea. All I had is all these um, thoughts and parables come to mind. And I just thought, okay, that's what I'm to share. 
<laughs> without even knowing what's being talked about. There was like many times there was this beautiful experience of the one mind. But it's been like so, such an incredible trip. Really, I'm so, so grateful. It has been like so strengthening for me, I feel. Like I feel like this inner like strength and like this inner trust just keeps growing and almost like this anchor inside of me just like something stable and settled inside and something you know that i never felt it was possible and like i feel like also like dynamics between ken and i which we would always be like ken is the one like usually like strong and and all of that, and I will be the one that was going through all this healing and like crying and everything. This trip, it just feels like Jesus was like, okay, we're gonna try something different now. And Ken was going through all his emotions, all his unraveling, deep, deep emotions. And suddenly I was just in this strength and this stability in my mind. And it was like, wow, this is like something completely new, like not old at all. And for me, that's been like, incredible i yeah it's just like no words to describe it like you know if we start sharing you with you like all the miracles and all the experience we've had like we would we wouldn't finish you know in 30 minutes there's no way like like endless miracles like cascading miracles really yeah we met like the most beautiful people too like yeah. here in spain we were here for many months and we were meeting with people we'd never actually known in form, you could say, but immediately it was like that recognition. And it felt almost like, you know, I always had this sensation that actually time was going backwards instead of forwards. That was really interesting. When I would meet someone and I would feel such a strong connection, it almost felt like what we were gonna live had already happened and that's why the connection was so strong since the first point. Almost like here's where we left off or something like that. Yeah. And with that, with so many, it's been like, wow, incredible, incredible. Mm -hmm. Here in Spain, in England, the same thing happened. Um, but it's been like a whole, you know, mm -hmm. restructuring of the mind. That's mm -hmm. how it feels, like a whole yes. rearrangement. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like, of course, Jesus teaches miracles are the, our, our prayer is the medium of miracles. And I remember even some years ago when we were doing those Living Miracles broadcast and you both mm -hmm. had your TV show and mm -hmm. sometimes you would pray uh, and pray all day. Basically, you would pray all day and then uh, they turn the camera on and you would both be sitting side by side with a chair and maybe a flower or something. And then it was very deep. Everybody felt mm -hmm. it. That's what people would say to me, like, wow, it feels like they've been praying all day long uh, mm -hmm. before this gathering. And then I think that has served you so well because in Spain, it was a bit different than when you went to England. In Spain, there was just, you were flooded with uh, invitations you were on the move, uh, going around, and it seemed like that was a, like you were saying, Anna, a, a time for you to to step in and and open up and and come in more stronger. And then with all that Kenneth went through uh, back in in England, that's the way it usually goes. You know, Jesus, when whenever you really need to go through some deep healing, it's just like go back to wherever there was some past associations or whatever, and then it like explodes, it comes up like a volcano. But I do, when I think of when you landed the first time there in um, in Spain, because you've just literally landed uh, again. Two minutes ago. Um, like, yeah, you know, a couple hours ago. A couple hours ago, so it's really fresh. But I remember that little garden section in the course where he talks about Miracles fall like healing rain on a dry and thirsty desert and and signs of life spring up everywhere that it's kind of beautiful that as you went to Spain the first time uh, on just faith and guidance that it was like the signs of life spring up. I mean, people were coming out of the woodwork. You were getting invitations for 
gatherings, retreats, one-on-ones, come to my living room, come visit me in my house. Oh, let me call some people over. It's very much like a lot of the pioneers of A Course in Miracles going way back to uh, the Varleys and Oman and Shanti, where they just were out there winging it. And and I think you said that, yeah, because of this was coming on in the pandemic, you know, people were forced to be inside, pull away from their course groups, uh, facing intense emotions. And so it was like there were the beautiful miracles falling like drops of healing rain on a dry and thirsty desert. And really signs of life sprung up everywhere you went. It was like the green was shooting up. The seeds were there, but they were under the ground. And you just brought the warmth and the love of Jesus and said, yeah, we don't have a format here. We're just going to show up. And you uh, tell us what you need. Tell us what you want. And then you've been also being able to pull in some of the movies and, and incorporate that into the retreat. That's a really cool thing, too. So just... What was that experience like? And already you said it's so busy. You've just landed in two hours, and now you're getting flooded with more invitations than you can handle. You have to actually start to turn some down. That's a beautiful experience, a beautiful witness. I just feel like right now, like so touched, like, you know, like tears are in my eyes, and it's just like, wow, I just have no idea. I remember the first, the day we were about to, start the first time we were gonna go out we were staying with our friends amanda and michael for a month and it was soon before we were out to launch on our first trip and i remember i did this prayer like jesus you need to show me that i'm meant to be here like i felt so like afraid and you know like all my emotions went everywhere and i just really need you to tell me that i'm meant to be here and i was talking with Amanda's mom mm-hmm. and she I don't know in that moment she had this pendulum thing which I had never done before but she said if there's one question you want to ask you are welcome to ask it and I said okay then and I just asked I had that question had been in my mind like Jesus am I meant to be here in Spain and suddenly the thing just swung into this yes and she's like, well, I'm not going to ask you what you asked, but that is a like really clear yes. <laughs> and, you know, like now, like looking back, it's just like, wow, I have no idea. It's like really like my heart is overflowing with gratitude. It's just incredible, incredible. You know, what we read, it, like you were mentioning the barleys, like I read that book many times and every time i need like coming back to my inspiration with my forgiveness practice i read it and then it's like god is like we've been like living it in a way you know in form and like all the forgiveness opportunities just keep washing over Mm -hmm. and the miracles yeah it's been so beautiful the people that we meet the ones that have really really touched me the most is the ones that don't do the Course in Miracles. And then they just start lighting up in front of me, and I'm just like, oh, my God, Jesus, you're just amazing. And these people are like, I don't know what's happening to me. And then they're getting, like, super happy. And that's what I love. And then even, like, people can be very, very timid, you know. They don't know the Course in Miracles, but then all of a sudden they start sharing their miracle stories. And we just start getting lit up by this. And it's like, then this happened to me, then that happened to me. And it's like, yeah, everyone we're supposed to meet is like, oh, go and meet this brother. Are we supposed to go in? And we go here. Then we meet these friends. Then we meet this one. And then, do you want to come to this house? Yeah, let's go to this house then. And we just don't even know why we're turning up. We just sit there and I'm just sitting there saying, okay, I'm here to be truly helpful, whatever's needed. And then that's when um, the healing takes place for people. <laughs> like, oh my god my mum hasn't shared her love with me like that ever before and all these things are happening around us this guy was really beautiful actually he he wasn't into the course but we were in the house with his friend that was into the course and at the end of our stay there i said um hey i just want to say how grateful i am like we all had dinner together 
And I just said, I just want to say how grateful I am um, to you for having us. And I know that you didn't, you weren't into any of this and like, you just like really welcomed us in. So I'm just like extremely grateful. And we all went round and, and then everybody went round and shared their gratefulness. And he said, and he said, I don't know what's gone on since you've come here. But he said, all I can describe it as, he said, you have brought fresh air to this house. It feels like all of the windows have been opened up. Yeah. All of the doors have been opened up. And there's just this stream of fresh air coming through. And he said, and I don't know what's got into me. He said, but I've got so much energy inside of me and I'm feeling so happy. And we were just like, oh, thank you so oh, yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. And the end he said, but the most important thing is that you put me in touch again with that spark of the love that I had for God that I lost many, many years ago. Oh. And I'll never forget that. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. Just like, yeah. Of those yeah, it makes you cry. Well, you know, when you're talking too, you're reminding me that 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 that's what I discovered when when I was going around. I was actually meeting, I think, more people uh, that were not in the course than that mm -hmm. were in the course because, of course, the United States is a big country. So, so when you travel, which I was usually traveling by car in the early days. You meet people at gas stations, rest areas, parks, picnic areas. You meet people that say, "Oh, what do you do? What? what? Hey, you want to come home and or you want to have lunch?" And there was more of those kind of encounters, and they were so heartfelt with people that weren't. I didn't even ever met meet them, and they weren't even into the course. Some a lot of them didn't even. We never. It never came up. You know, we yeah. were there for joy. It it just never came up. So when you're talking, that's just reminding me how this is so different. I think sometimes people think they have an idea of what a traveling Course in Miracles teacher is, you know, just going from hotel to hotel to city to city to group to group. And this is an actual living experience. Mm -hmm. Every single moment of every day, you're in mm -hmm. prayer. You don't turn, you don't have a little switch. You don't turn it on and off like, okay, I get arrive and I get put my bags in the hotel and I get a, a good rest. And then I have a, a day or two to turn the switch on and then turn the switch off. This isn't the same. Uh, this, mm -hmm. is, this is actually moment by moment inspired living. This is like living A Course in Miracles, living the teachings of Jesus having a direct contact with Jesus so that you you pray and you're told where to go. Maybe you could share, that happened to you right before you came here. You were telling me that in England, you were supposed to go to a house for a gathering. And then it was like an hour, over an hour drive, an hour, an hour and a half. And then right before you were leaving, you were told that there somebody in the house, the, the husband had, house? Was, had COVID. And then everything just shifted in that moment, like on a dime, everything just shifted. Yeah, so basically 15 minutes before we were about to drive for an hour and 10 minutes to the place, I get a message from the host saying, spanner in the works, my husband's got COVID and we were doing the gathering in the house. She's like, do, do we still go ahead? Okay, so we sit there and pray. I said, well, I feel like we're still supposed to go ahead. Yeah, she do. says, I've tested negative, um, so do we all feel good? She said, I'm going to try and move everything. So she's in the midst of speaking to everybody, moving everything. Within the 15 minutes, it was all handled. Um, a friend said, you can do it in my garden. She ran out there, got all that set up there. Mm -hmm. And then her other friend said, they can come and stay with me. I've got a spare bed. So we said, well, we're just going to get in the car anyway and just see what happens. Yeah, at this point, we jumped in the car. We actually didn't, we didn't know even know. We just went, okay, no, we're going in that so direction. we said, no, we're still feel to go. Let's go. And we were trusting that everything will work out because we could feel yeah, this gathering. Yeah. It just felt good. Yeah, exactly. We still didn't have a place. We had said, we don't have a place yet, but we just jumped in the yeah. car. And we're like, okay, we'll just go there and see what happens. If the gathering happens, great. If not, then yeah. great. And then, and then, so basically, we get there. It's all absolutely perfect, you know. Everybody turns up. It was literally like effortless. 
And then the friend was super excited about having us. Um, so she was like, oh, I'm so glad you're staying with us. And it was like, it was perfect because it was like for her healing that obviously something was there. And she was pretty brand new to the Course in Miracles. And after the event, she had all these grievances with another, with another um, one of her friends. And the friend came round and then she's got all of this emotion coming up. And it was just after your movie, we'd watched the movie. And then I'll come down the stairs just in the middle of it. They said, I'm glad you've turned up because we're arguing here. <laughs> and so then she like shared all of her private thoughts and it was absolutely beautiful. She was kind of quite resistant to the eye to, to some of the things I had to say in the beginning. <laughs> and it was really funny, but I was really like loving working with her. And then she was just like getting it on like a more of a profound and deep level. And she was like, I get it. I get it, I get it. And like she was just like so grateful. And it was like, oh my God, that was the reason why we were staying with her because we needed to spend more time. And then it's like after that, she says, if ever you come back, you you can come and stay at my house. And it's like, okay, thank you. Yeah, no, so it's like we never ever truly know who we're supposed to meet. It seemingly looks like you're going, this is what always happens. We I say, we're going seemingly for this, and then we come for this. You know, Jesus has got like a huge, great plan yeah. that yeah. is beyond anything that we can yeah. comprehend. Yeah, and it really feels like, it's almost like we just like, are, you know, we're just getting going along, going to wherever we're meant to go, almost like we're just like observing the whole thing happening. But it just feels like we're just like there. Not much has happened, maybe, we, we you know we're just talking or whatever we're not saying anything you know anything and then all of a sudden all these miracles start happening in front of us and all these things happen like in front of us and it's just like jesus is just showering and convincing mm -hmm. us all the time mm -hmm. all the time yeah. like yeah. it's been for us definitely this yeah. trip has been just for us just to convince yeah. us and like to trust in such and way really we have to we have to yeah that's, that's beautiful it's like that's the biggest lesson i think is that it's always your own lesson it's not really about persons or other people's lessons because here it is you you do you're in the middle of engaging something and kind of you walk down and you just walk into the middle of an argument two people arguing and and they don't have to be course students. Uh, this is just the presence of love is there and the presence of love knows how to come through and bring peace. Like Jesus says, whenever you believe anything is lacking in any situation, it's what you have failed to give. But I'm glad you're bringing this up because I think a lot of times people will work with the course in a kind of a, a very intellectual way and then they have online groups and they form these big online groups and then they like bicker and banter and argue about interpretations of of a sentence or a paragraph and this is so different than that this is like you're actively saying yes to spirit to jesus use me as a miracle worker you really don't know you're showing up you don't know the specifics you just know that you're there to be helpful you're there to bring peace uh like saint francis lord make me an instrument of your peace, your, that's like the prayer of the heart. And then everything is taken care of. In fact, you know, here this week, uh, we're just getting ready to go into an online retreat and a, a Saturday movie session. But the theme this week is, is miracles are involuntary. Mm -hmm. What you're sharing yeah. right now is that song, totally on theme. This is like Jesus yeah. starting the, the retreat on Thursday, the day before we started, because you're just witnessing how, you know, you don't have control over what to say, what to do, where to go. You know, many people might say that doesn't even sound human. And it's, it's really not. It's almost like the, the spirit is channeling through the mind and using the bodies to speak and to smile and laugh and hug. Even you shared there was a woman uh, in Spain who, who just said, I have to see you and came to, to talk to both of you because she'd been through, you know, years of, of sexual abuse and, and was almost just ready to, it had to come up, almost ready to explode, mm -hmm. kind of like an exorcism because yeah. it was repressed for so mm -hmm. long. And then mm -hmm. they, 
she just felt your loving presence. And then you, all that allowance and how the spirit gently guided you to work with her. And then now she's still friends to this day. Let me know when you come around. People will never forget that moment when they were able to open up and, and heal uh, from all this uh, bottled up uh, tension and bottled up conflict, taking it personally, uh, holding a grievance, and then suddenly the air, everything is clear. It's so miraculous. Yeah, that's it. Because as you said, really, it's always our healing, you know, and it's like they reflect that. And it's beautiful. It's really, it's always fulfilling my heart. So it's like, I feel so blessed. And everything that's coming is just perfect for what I need to learn, you know. And that's like, it's like always like the opposite of the way around. Like they're, they're, they're coming for me. And it's like really for me to be letting go all, all, of the, all of the time. And that's what I've seen on this trip for me. It's like, I can't be in my old way any longer. You know, I, I've seen like, um, oh, I've got to do it. I've got to get it done. I'm responsible. And it's like, this has been the real sort of like dismantling for me. And just like then, then there's just been like a lot of emotion with all of that because it was all part of these ideas about myself. And obviously really underneath it all was like all of this unworthiness that I was trying to cover up and not having to be strong. And realizing that I was feeling scared and I was feeling frightened. And I just had this self concept that was like, no, everything's all right. I'm going to handle everything. Yeah. As I did. And seemingly it's carried me along the spiritual journey and it's given me a lot of muster to have the next lesson to stand up again. But it's like now it's like falling away. And I can't like rely on that energy. That energy isn't even there. So then there's this falling apart happening for me and then i just feel like oh my god here comes a wave of unworthiness yeah and i've just got to sit there it's like 3 a.m in the morning this is coming washing through me wow i feel really scared okay this is what i'm going through but it's been really enjoyable right because before right i haven't been in touch with any of these emotions because i'm i'm gonna do it i'm gonna get it done you know and so i just didn't realize that that was such a defense that i was really really scared and frightened and now I just go, wow, I, or not knowing, there was this such idea, like, I've got to know, or this protectionism as well. Like, I don't know, I've just played it out for years. I have no idea where it came from. It's like since a child, I've always felt I've got to protect everyone. And it's just like this task that cannot be met yet. And I repeat it over and over and over again. I'm just like, when am I going to learn this lesson? And it's like, it always falls, like, it always becomes challenging and then upsetting for me because it's my own strength. But this time, it's like, I'm seeing it more and more. And, like, I don't have the answers, right? And, and then, like, there's, like, I, I can, I've, I've been able to cry. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I feel scared. I feel frightened. And I'm with the people, yeah? And it's like, I've just got to share how I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm like, I've just got to share it, right? But in sharing it, that's it's so been much like, my, really like, yeah, that's my like me. During the early years when I was going around, I I was just totally winging it. You know, I had so much emotions. I did like a six-hour car ride and an eight-hour car ride, and I'm I'm driving and I'm listening to music and I'm crying and I'm feeling like generally like a mess and and thinking there's actually I'm supposed to speak at the next town because you're driving next six hours eight hours thinking well Jesus I'm glad you're in charge because I I feel like a mess I I'm gonna trust that I'm gonna be sane <laughs> by the time I get to the town and that sounds like you know for, it's just yeah. so transparent for people because I think what happens is what you're talking about now is people are so identified with the personality and with the protectionisms and defense mechanisms, or maybe even just with skills and abilities, you know, like people maybe have never met you and they're just watching for the first time. Yeah, usually I have like 50 or 70 people. There's 3,595 people uh, watching 
Yeah, I got the rock stars on today. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're up in Oprah Winfrey range or something. Like I, we're just being transparent. But the thing is, you know, people don't know that Ken gave himself over into psychotherapy and allowed all of that to be used as a phase of opening up. Uh, the heart, you know, when you're doing psychotherapy, that's very intimate. And, and you really, I think you learn to pray, you learn to, to mm -hmm. ask for help. And, and, and Anna, you've had such amazing, uh, like graphic artistry skills and technical skills. And I know you did like Svava's uh, for the cover for her albums and all kinds of things. And now you're both thrown out, go off. They send you to Spain, <laughs> Jesus does. It throws you just out there and says, here, deal with this and, and, and just pray. So I think maybe that's the thing that you got from all of this is you just have really learned how to really pray in a sincere way. Help me, help me. And, and that's the greatest thing that if you had to just say one thing, if you yeah. just pray and you ask for help, moment by moment as you go along mm -hmm. or wherever you need it, instead of trying to figure it out emotionally or, or intellectually, you just dive in and pray. Then suddenly you start to realize this miracles are involuntary and it's like you're being carried on some kind of a carpet ride with tears, mm -hmm. still yeah. tears going down your face, but sometimes tears of joy, <laughs> you I know. Mean, exactly, it was like we did this retreat and um, I just felt like I was completely death warmed up. I mean, all my emotions Ken were just, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was all over the show. I mean, it was just like, it, it, looked like, it looked like hell to me. But it was like completely crazy because everything around me was like this miracles were just taking place. And so I couldn't be res you, you, I couldn't yeah. be responsible. I don't know how that retreat actually went. Well, no idea. Because I don't know what was going on with me, but I also felt terrible. And we were sitting in the morning praying for the gathering that's about to start. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Ken, I feel horrible. And he's like, Tell me about it. Like, me too. I said, like, We need help. We have no idea where to go. Jesus, help now. Help us now. You know. It was amazing. Like, what and like, then we would like right. sit you know pay you know pay and then the time comes and then the ideas would come everything just comes out of us in this involuntary way mm -hmm. everyone's having these amazing <laughs> heart opening experiences and we're just like observing like wow he says you really are in charge because we have no idea what's going on it was like pray do the session the session's like amazing go back fall apart pray do the session fall apart this was the whole thing and all i'm hearing outside is people laughing people crying people letting go i mean it was just incredible going around me and i'm like wow jesus you've really got it because i definitely have it <laughs> like it has you know like it has really really brought me to that place of i don't know i don't know, I don't know. You know, but like in a deep place, like almost like feeling I'm on my hands and knees and say, I don't know. And I'm holding your hand, Jesus, and you need to help me and you need to show me. I have no idea how to interpret the world that I see. I mm. think I'm seeing all these things and mm. I'm, you know, you're telling me I'm completely like mm. wrong about what I'm seeing. So I just need so much help. And from that place, like I feel like then everything can start. So, yeah, from that place, I don't know. I was reading that section not long ago where he yeah. explains all about that. And I was like, yes, yes, that's so true. So yeah. true. Yeah. Every time I am, I'm in that place and I ask for help, he always does. In one way or another. Yeah. I mean, because it's like even like the practical things, this is what makes me laugh as well. Like sometimes you could be so sort of like present, but you forget like the logistics and like then things are just completely handled. So, for example, we, we, we met with a friend and she said, let's go into the town. And we parked in the car park. Yeah. And literally, as we're walking along, I said to her, do we know how long we've got on the car park? Yeah. And then with that moment, the person who paid for their ticket in front of us walked to us and said, don't forget, you've got 30 minutes still left on your ticket. Yes. <laughs> no, that's amazing. It was this lady. 
when we were when we parked she was doing the ticket at the same time and we had a little chat and then we saw her again in the town and she said hey don't forget you're parking 30 mm. minutes so we're like oh my god <laughs> we didn't know how long yeah. we had yeah. there. Oh, I'm just oh, I'm just sitting down. We say, oh, let's have a coffee here. I sit down. I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, my antenna sort of like tunes into these people's conversation, and they say, "Do you know you can get this bus from here? And it's only this, and it's only that." And I go, "Thank you, Jesus." And then, there's me bus. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's probably the most striking thing is that that not only are miracles involuntary, but but you can actually keep even going deeper into that experience where, as Jesus says in the course, you know, if you'll allow me to pour miracles, perform miracles through you, I will handle time and space. Or he told me at the beginning, and he says in the course, I will handle everything that does not matter. He's actually talking about all the logistics of time and space, which can be quite complex. He will handle all of that if we just show up with the open heart, with the lead me, Jesus, guide me. And I think that's the thing, you know, maybe that's why I enjoy when I'm out and about and when I do a gathering where um, there's a lot of mixed, we'll call it mixed audience, because uh, like one time I did a gathering in uh, with Francis in um, Los Angeles and, and Miriam, our friend, opened up her, her residential clubhouse and the requirement to use the clubhouse is you had to put an invitation at everybody's doorstep in the entire <laughs> residential community. And she was like, I, I hope this is okay. I said, that's wonderful. I said, it's California, it's LA. Everybody's into spirituality anyway. So, and, and there was a few people that came that knew of the course, but most of them didn't. And those are my favorite gatherings because you're just there with your brothers and sisters, just sharing the love in your heart. They feel it, you feel it. And it's not like there's no prearranged uh, stereotypes of, of anything. It's just joy, just sharing the joy. And I think, I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about this, but I, I felt so honored how Jesus could use travel you know, sometimes when we're used to living in the same building uh, all the time, it, it can almost be a heaviness. Like you start to get familiar with things. You, you, there's a routine or something and you start to feel more like it's a nine to five job uh, and you're living in a house or in a, in a building. And then that's just thoughts, but yeah. still yeah. it doesn't feel good. But when you're traveling, there's so many seeming variables and there's so many things that you're just kind of enjoying what shows up like look at this did you did you hear that did you hear that you know you you don't even know what you're going to do or you go visit somebody you don't know how you're going to get back and then suddenly a, a late afternoon a late night bus uh is there leaving going back to the place you have to go and you okay and you hop in and there you go people that sounds kind of um it sounds almost like a fairy tale. It, it, it always is. felt to me like I was watching a fairy tale while it was all happening because there was no rhyme or reason to it. It was just felt like I was carried. But I, you know, when I would just try to describe a few bits of it, people would go, oh, you're talking about it like it's a fairy tale. And I thought, well, that's what it feels like. I'm just sharing with you what I'm feeling. And so it, it's quite amazing, really. Yeah. Yeah, like I really felt on this trip how like it has almost felt like Jesus is just like sending us to these houses, you know, always something miraculous happened or invited somewhere or whatever. But it almost feels like Jesus is just sending me to this house for one week or however many days to fully live that life in a way because we just come in into this new world. It almost feels like that, this new Whole, whole thing, everything's new again, new kitchen, new everything. And so we enter into this person's world. And then I just feel like I just embrace whatever is there fully. And then, you know, all the love is so beautiful when we have to like say our goodbyes or whatever. And then it's like, okay, that was, my heart is full of love. And then it's like, okay, on to the next one. Again, submerging and just absorbing everything. But 
I was telling the other day to my friend that I just felt like Jesus has had us like living all this, like many lives, you know, many, many lives, just to see like what you truly want is forgiveness. And that, that is the only thing that is actually what you want. It's not in this life or the other or the other. You know, we enjoy whatever shows up in that place, you know, or the connections, the conversations. And then it's like we, it's like, okay, we hold it and then it's time to let it go, let it go and jump onto the next. Yeah. It has been so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. we're like living a, a version of this Turkish uh, show and sharing <laughs> another life. You're like, yeah, it sure is another life. <laughs> and, and yet it is like episodes. Like um, mm -hmm. when you go to stay with a host, it's it turns into an episode. And then... The next episode can be completely different in the form, but the purpose is the same, to, to give it over to Jesus, to you know, make me an instrument, let me be used in a purposeful, helpful way. You know, that grows strong in your heart, but the form changes so much. I was, the last time I did, uh, last Saturday, I did an episode, I popped in because Pete was doing the Q&A, and uh, my friend Teresa, who, who came to the monastery, who's part of a renovatio, she came on and she said, I can't, it's hard for me to formulate with this uh, Turkish series uh, what I really want to ask. But then she just said, how is it going to end? <laughs> <laughs> and, and this kind of experience where you're like lifted and carried, you don't really have that question anymore. You're so present mm. that you're not seeing it as a serial life. In fact, uh, this afternoon here at the monastery, I, I found a new uh, Star Trek episode in Strange mm -hmm. New Worlds, and the whole thing's about time. The, the captain gets a premonition of mm -hmm. like eight years in the future when he will die. He sees how he'll die. He sees the people that will also die, and it, it weighs heavy on him. And mm -hmm. then uh, the episode I'm going to show in about three hours or so is called A Quality of Mercy, where it goes into the whole depth that that linear time is the trick, and and he he wants to change the future and he wants to save himself and the people and because he wants things to be different than they are, uh, he wants the script to be different. A giant war starts in, <laughs> in the future in which millions of people die because of some of the decisions he has to make, but his his higher self shows up to him and says, here's like, here's a time crystal. All you have to touch it. And I'm just going to show you some scenes from the future so that you can basically be humble and come back and not go there, uh, not go down those timelines. And I think that's really what, what you're doing. You know, when you're traveling and you're just being used from one scenario to the next, it starts to become obvious that, that the healing is in the mind and it's not interpersonal, which that's the big trick of the world. That's why we need therapists. We believe we need therapists because, because it's this interpersonal mess when really it's just a misperception. You know, we're just not seeing the big picture. We're not seeing the whole. But when you give yourself over so fully to just say, use me, Jesus, I don't care wherever you want to take me, take me, use me however you want. Then that brings an, a huge experience and tears of love and joy start pouring and you start to realize, oh my God, this is what I was really praying for. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know the form it would take, but obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> there is one inside mm -hmm. me who, who does know mm -hmm. the, the form. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's important that we have to be transparent with one another to keep clear in our mind of whatever we're feeling and whatever the fears and the doubt thoughts that, that, that come through. And so that's like, that's been like really, really important. Um, just being honest, really. Like not having to put on a brave face about anything. Yeah. And know that, you know, the cause is in my own mind. Yeah. And then the outward reflects whatever is going on in my mind. So then it's yeah. like, hmm. So it's always revealing itself to you. As to what you need to heal, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> again and again, yeah. remembering that. And you can't attach to anything because it's always like... 
yeah. yeah. You guys are describing and demonstrating I, the holy relationship because whenever that topic comes up, people have so many ideas from the past that they try to project onto the relationship, which really doesn't, Really, it isn't the holiness. The holiness is is this light within that's been covered over, and your transparency is is really a demonstration of what the course calls the holy relationship. It's very different because then people say, "I want a holy relationship." I'm watching and I'm seeing Ken and Anna, and I'm thinking, "I want that. I want that." And then we're here sharing. Well, all it takes is is transparency. If you pray, you stay open, and you're transparent. Jesus will do it for you. You don't even have to uh, figure it out <laughs> or you can't plan it. <laughs> so that's for yeah. sure. You can't plan it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever our lessons are, because that's what we're always praying for. Bring up whatever is in my unconscious mind that needs to be healed. I don't have to worry about that. Just bring it up, Jesus. He will bring it up. <laughs> you know, it's not like we plan to come with each other, you know? No. Or that we were like together. Okay, baby, we want to go together, you know? No. Nothing like that. It was just like, you it's felt Jesus. it so clear. Like you and you over there, you two are going to Spain. And I said, like, whoa, oh, you know, okay, here we go, you know? The, uh, the unraveling continues because yeah. it's been like such huge healing. You know, apparently between us, which is not really it, but the kind of mirroring that's been going on, you know, it's been like intense, incredible, <laughs> very, Victim very artists. challenging at times, <laughs> and with massive like openings of forgiveness too, and just a lot of humbleness mm -hmm. over and over again. This is not this problem you know if i see it it's because it's in my mind and that's where i need to pray for help to see this differently yeah yeah oh uh, uh, yeah. that's holy that is holy i feel the same feeling like when you used to do those shows together where you just were praying all day then you came out and you were sitting there together and your eyes were closed and you were just still mm -hmm. carrying the prayer and then not mm -hmm. knowing what you would say or do and yeah. then it came through so gracefully, so deep, so reverent, yeah. and everyone feels it. So, yeah. so it's, I think this is um, this is kind of a, a a symbol that is very helpful because a lot of times people feel like they have a, a role to play in a in a very sense of personal role, and you both have have had so many skills and abilities, and and you've been put in so many different situations uh, before this trip, before these trips over to, to this trip to Europe and, and England. And now it's almost like it's just taking you deeper, deeper down the rabbit hole. Like you're just saying, okay, we're, I'm going to the light and I'm, I'm surrendered. Uh, and I'm going to let the light take me there instead of mm -hmm. like believing I personally have to make the right moves or yeah. do the right things. A lot of, a pressure and stress when we believe mm -hmm. that personally we have to solve the riddle or figure our mm -hmm. way uh, back to heaven when really we just have to pray and ask and then it, it all is shown. I'm yeah. so grateful like he truly knows the way to our heart. He just keeps repeating over and over again. He knows, you know, he knows how to reach me. He knows and if I can be in that place with my heart open and in that prayer, as you say, like he just shows it in front of us, you know. Yeah. That's what I that's what I want. Yeah. Take me with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. I, I we, you were just in Spain for two hours. Now you're almost coming to the three hour mark and you already have a, a woman <laughs> that you need to connect with. <laughs> Jesus is giving you the prompt. So we are all graced by uh, your presence mm -hmm. to oh, come up you. and share. And uh, we knew this would happen. We were just waiting for the right internet. Yeah. <laughs> and wow, I got the prompt and I didn't even know that you just had landed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. I, it was funny because I'd only just set up my computer. We literally got to the house. I just set up my computer and I was like sending out because then we got another gathering come through. So I'm sending out the next minute. You call me. <laughs> It was perfect timing. And I was on calls. I'm like, there's just calls coming in everywhere. Yeah. 
yeah. And we were like alone also. Our friend had to go out. So yeah. we were just like sending in. So, yeah. But that, but that is it though, isn't it? Because it's like 10 months of traveling and people are saying, you've got 10 months of traveling. I said, I don't feel tired at all. And they said, wow, you've really put on some gatherings, haven't you? I said, we haven't done a thing. We haven't even organised a thing. I, said, I don't even feel it. I, I can't take responsibility for any of that. I, listen, yeah. I was nothing to do with it. Yeah. Because it was, it's, it's just come to us, hasn't it? We haven't tried to do anything. And it's just, it's almost like the break buttons. The phone rings. I mean, it's like, Pete, I don't even know where they get my number from. I get ring. Hello. No, you don't know me. Okay, then. Yeah. Can we meet up? Yeah, sure. And I think, where did they come from? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, you are this. This is the day before we start our online monthly retreat. Uh, miracles are involuntary, and you are perfect examples of that. Because when I called, uh, Ken answered. Anna was talking in a Spanish call, and I was speaking to him English. And he said, "I got a headset." <laughs> Put the headsets on. We had a little joining. Then Anna came over, and then here we are. So yeah. the spirit arranges time and space for us. That's one of the teachings of the course that most people are like, "How does the spirit arrange time and space? And how does that fit with the script is written?" It's like, well, one step at a time. <laughs> while you believe, while you believe you're human, it's fun to have things arranged, and then you start to get more into the observer, like watching it all, and and feeling like who you are is is not in the world uh, or not in the in the characters you know it's about like a movie but you're uh, demonstrating miracles are actually indeed involuntary <laughs> okay well beautiful carry on and uh, i'm sure everybody who's watched today just feels their heart bursting open with mm -hmm. blessings so we we're so grateful and i'm i wish you well and uh, maybe Will you be on the, the weekend retreat or the... Yes, uh, yes yeah, we're we'll going to be there. there. We'll be there for we that. Be We've got a road trip as well on the Saturday and we're going to get there early. Then we'll be at the movies. <laughs> we'll be at the movies. Okay, you're yeah, not going to we'll miss those movies. All right. Okay. Uh, Many blessings. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Many blessings. Bye-bye.